All right, so we've created our database connection. We've set up our page to use that connection. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, creating some content in the database. So we're going to create a table, and this table is going to hold information for the pages on our site. So if you're coming over to this and uh, with a background of doing static websites, um, we're not going to be creating um, a page, an actual static uh, page for every page on the website. So whereas you're probably used to making like an index page, you know, index.html, and then say we have an about us page, so about us.html, and so on and so forth, um, we're going to be loading the content for those pages into one page. So what we're going to do here is create a table to hold that information. And this table we're going to create is kind of a basic example of uh, what we're going to do further on. So to make sure we're all on the same page here, make sure we've got our Atom CMS database selected, and we're on the Structure tab, and you see this Create a Table on Database Atom CMS. So we need to give it a name, and we need to tell it how many columns we want to have. Now the columns, or sometimes if you're, if you're used to databases like an Access, uh, Microsoft Access or something like that, you might think of them as fields. This is going to store the individual pieces of information for each page. So we need to think about how many columns we might need. And uh, many times I'd be using a whiteboard for this. So I'll, I'll write out you know, uh, what, what columns I think need to be in there and, and really think this out. For this example, we're going to keep it pretty simple. So um, in a database, we need to have a unique ID for each one of these pages or each one of the records in the database, also known as rows, rows and columns. Um, they need to have an ID and many times this is going to be a numeric value and this is the unique identifier for each page so our home page may be called home page and have a title of home page but in the database we can refer to it as record number one so so what that allows us to do is in the event that you had to maybe you needed to name a page home more than once. Um, then you could have several home pages, but they each have a unique ID. One home page might be ID 1, another one might be ID 30. And that way you can give it the same name, but then know which one to grab from the database based on the ID number. Now that might seem like a funny example uh, for home pages, but um, if you think about maybe the contact list in your phone. A lot of us out there have unique names and that's fine. But uh, some people have generic names like say Joe Smith. You might know more than one Joe Smith and so in your phone you might have a couple Joe Smiths. How does your phone know which one to grab? When you're pulling up your contact list and you see three Joe Smiths, if you click on the first one the way it knows which Joe Smith to grab which data to grab for that Joe Smith is because of its ID number. So you can look at it that way. So back to what we were talking about. We need an ID. So that's our first column. We need a page title. So that's column two. We're gonna we're gonna want some content on this page or the body of the page. Three columns. And then we might actually want to affect the title that shows up in the browser. So that's four. So let's go ahead and stick with that. So let's give it a name and we'll call this pages. So our table is going to be called pages and we're going to have four columns. And We'll go over here and click go. And here's something that happened that, that drives me nuts. If you're using an old version of PHP My Admin, this uh, little pop-up box wouldn't show up. And uh, I hate this thing because it never fits everything in there, um, drives me nuts. So I'm going to hit cancel and we'll just remember that we're going to call it pages and it needs four columns. But really quick, let's click back here on localhost and let's go over here to settings and then we'll click on features 
and here this enable Ajax. Usually Ajax is a great thing, but in this case I don't want that stupid pop-up, so we're going to check this box, or uncheck it, and click Save. There we go. Now if you don't mind that, ignore this step. So let's hop back over here to the left here to Adam CMS. And I remember what we were talking about. So we're going to do pages and four columns. And now you're going to see the difference here. Now we get it all laid out here. So we can see almost all of the uh, information we need to put in here. So this first column, again, is going to be the ID. So we'll just call it ID. And we need to give it a data type or a type. And this just basically means what kind of data is going to be in here. Um, INT stands for integer. So we know this is going to be a number. And if we choose integer, we need to put in a length. So how many, how many characters can this be? So if we put in 1, that means our number can really only be between 0 and 9. If we put in 2, well, we can go all the way up to 99, and so on. So depending on how many characters or how many pages you think you're going to have, um, you need to kind of adjust this number. Now, they also have some predefined values in here, like medium int. I believe that's nine characters. I could be off on that, but it's pretty big. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. You'll see me using that a lot, because uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to reach that many pages. Not nine, but nine characters worth. That's a real big number. So we'll go ahead and stick to that. And then we can leave this length slash values field here empty. Now we're going to skip over some of these. Um, we don't need to use these for everything. We're going to come down here to index. Now index, we're going to tell this this is our primary key. And this is telling the database that ID is the unique way to identify a record in this field. Now I call it ID because that's pretty standard. You could really call this whatever you want as long as you set this to the primary key or primary index. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to check this AI box. This stands for auto increment. This tells the database that we want to automatically create the ID number. And it's just going to do it, you know, one two, three, four, five. So we don't have to worry about knowing which the, what the last page that was created, what ID it was. It's automatically going to make the next page the next number. So if we've got four pages in our database or in this table and we want to add another one, we don't need to remember that the last ID was four. It's automatically going to know that this one needs to be five. So we check that. So the next thing, um, I've kind of rearranged my thoughts here. We're still going to have the same amount of columns here. But um, the next one, we're going to call it the page title. Now this is going to be what shows up in the um, browser title, not in the body. We're going to call that the header. So for title, this isn't going to be an int or an integer. Now maybe it's going to have some numbers in there if you need it to, but um, we need it to actually be a string or you know various characters so we're actually going to use this var car is what I call it uh, you know might pronounce it differently um, but this basically means we're gonna put a lot of different characters in here we still need to give it a length and value um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna say 200 that's probably way more than we need and you can adjust that later if you feel you need to now for this, this is all we need. We don't need to check any of these boxes. The next one's going to be our header. This is going to be what shows up on the page. So if it's the home page, it might say in real bold, home. And this needs to be var car as well. And we'll give this one a little more space, say 300. Again, we don't need to do anything else over here. The last one is going to be the uh, page body, and we'll just call that body for short. Now if you want to, you can be more descriptive in your titles. You cannot have any spaces, but you could be a little more descriptive if you needed to. So you could do, say, page underscore body. However, I like to keep things real simple. You'll see a lot of people using the underscore and things like that and making these really big titles. Um, that's really up to you. Now this one's going to be a little different. 
we still need the ability to put in whatever characters we want. However, we're going to go ahead and choose long text. This is saying that we want to be able to put a lot of text in here. I don't remember exactly how much you're allowed to put in, um, but it's a it's a huge amount. So you can really put a ton of you know like an actual giant page worth of of uh, text in here, paragraphs and paragraphs and such. And because that's got a predetermined length, we don't need to put that in here. So let's go ahead and save this. Don't hit go, because that's saying uh, we want to add another column. We don't want to do that. Which, so you know, even though it's good to um, think ahead and plan like we did, we figured out we needed four columns. If you need to add more later, you still can. So this isn't set in stone, but it is good to prepare. So let's go ahead and hit save. So now we're in our pages table over here. And if, if you need to get back to it, you can click over here to pages. And it's showing us the structure. We don't have any data in here. So we want to insert some data. So let's come over here to the insert tab. And this is going to allow us to put some records in here, or create pages in this case. So let's go ahead and create a page. We're going to skip the ID field because that's going to automatically increment for us. So for the title, we'll call this home page. And this is again what's going to show up in the browser. And this is the title for the browser window or the tab. Header is the title for the page. We'll do welcome to Adam CMS 2.0. Then we have our body. Now I've gone ahead and copied some of the uh, most generic web text on here, the lorem ipsum text. So I'm going to paste that in here. So this is going to be our page body for the home page. Now if we wanted to, we can go ahead and uh, by default PHP admin gives you the option to put in two records at a time. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If we were ready to go with just this one, we could click go here and it would insert it. So let's go ahead and create another page and we'll call this about us. And again, this is what shows up in the browser tab. Um, for the page header, we're going to do about Adam CMS. And for the body, we'll just go ahead and paste that lorem ipsum again. And now we can go ahead and say go. And a uh, neat thing about PHP My Admin is that it actually shows you what it did. This is the actual SQL code to do what it did. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's go over here to Browse. And now you can see we have some records in our database. So Structure shows you how the database looks, what's in it. And now we're into Browse, and this shows us what's in our table. This is the data inside the table. If we wanted to come back over here to structure, we can see what our table consists of, the uh, columns and things like that, and add to it. But if we want to look at the actual data, we go to browse. So now we can take this data and use it on our website.